I see the will of this dais and where it is. You all want to cancel this meeting so you can take December off? That's to me, awesome. that's, that's disrespectful to our residents. I think we're and, and just out of just simple, please let me finish because this is the last you're ever going to hear from me. After a failed bid for Congress, Miami City Commissioner Ken Russell is leaving his post. But before his exit, he has important projects to address, and he was expecting to do that during a meeting this upcoming week, which commissioners voted to cancel. That vote outraged Commissioner Russell, who threatened to quit early. I had the chance to sit down with the commissioner to talk about what happened. And joining me now, Miami Commissioner Ken Russell. Commissioner, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jackie. Okay, you know the song from The Clash, Will I Stay or Will I Go? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I'm asking you, will you stay or will you go? <laughs> well, I'm in my last month of my final term, at any rate, and I had one last meeting in December that the commissioners canceled. So in my mind, if I can't serve that meeting, if they're not willing to get back together and finish that last meeting of the year, my last meeting of my last term, mm -hmm. then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave one month early and save the taxpayers that money. Okay. And has there been a verdict? Not yet. So far, one commissioner uh, mm -hmm. has said they would join. That's plus me. That's two. We need one more commissioner to say yes just to do their job. That's December 8th, right? Yes. So tell me, what are some of those initiatives that you want to discuss in that meeting? Well, something I've worked on that's been very close to my heart for the entire eight-year term is affordable housing, and specifically mm -hmm. in West Coconut Grove, which is now Little Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And it's almost indicative, if, if these items don't get passed, that... They're, they're so used to getting kicked in the teeth over there by policymakers, by administration, by development. Um, they're really counting on a lot of this. So mostly it's affordable housing incentives through zoning. Uh, but it's also some grants to some big organizations and churches uh, that do a lot of work in the community. Do you think something can get done if you do have that meeting in December? One hundred percent. In fact, all of the commission has been working toward this, which is why it doesn't make any sense. We've passed votes granting the money to purchase the land for affordable housing. We've allocated American Rescue Plan funds to groups like Casa Valentina, who's over there. And this is the final step of a long process to which all of them have been in support. So I, I believe if we can have the meeting, the support will be there. If the meeting doesn't happen, these commissioners take a two-month break, collectively getting about $50,000 in taxpayers' money without having to go to one day of work. What has been the sticking point? Because I know that uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a clash back and forth where you said that if this doesn't happen, you are going to walk away. And you actually walked away from the meeting. Yes. I, I mean, the clash you may be surprised to know is petty, petty politics. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so common in the city of Miami. And it's such a shame because of the ones who suffer uh, are our residents. Um, so, you know, this has happened in the past. We fight a lot in the city of Miami, but we get the work done. And this will be the exception. Um, and so if, if the meeting doesn't happen for whatever reason, um, I do hope that my successor and the other commissioners take up these items, that they champion these issues even after I'm gone. And even if I don't cut the ribbons, if I push the first domino, I'll be happy to see, to see better things happen in, in, in Little Bahamas. The first time that I interviewed you was back in 2015. You were running for this position. No political experience whatsoever. You were advocating for Merry Christmas Park in Coconut Grove. You had high expectations, high hopes. Do you feel that you have been able to make a difference in our community in the past eight years? Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of what we've done as a city over the last eight years and my part in it. Um, it just goes to show that anybody can do it uh, because I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the connections, the name, the money, uh, but I won a very important seat on a very important issue. And since then, we've cleaned up five other contaminated parks in the city of Miami. I've been able to write and pass the state's strongest environmental le legislation on water quality and climate change. Uh, and now I leave office taking a job where I'll be able to make an even bigger difference on the environment and climate change in the private sector. Tell me about that because I know that has been a big issue for you, the environment, obviously. And your new job has to do with the environment as well. Tell us about well, it. You never know where fate's going to take you or the mm -hmm. voters. I had thought I would be going to federal office and run mm -hmm. for con uh, being in Congress where I could make a big difference with these sorts of things. But for lack of that, and the day after I lost my, uh, my primary, for Congress, uh, I got in touch with a company who does exactly that, consulting uh, for climate change. It's called Environmental and Social Governance uh, um, Initiatives. And so they work with private development to make them better stewards of the community and the environment. I've convinced them to open up a public sector unit, which means I'll be calling on governments just like the one I served in to help them pass legislation just like the one I, one I did. That's amazing. That, that sounds like a perfect fit for you. 
I'm so excited. This mm -hmm. is a new chapter of my life, and, and I won't have to deal with the petty politics of, of the dais. You mentioned the primary and the loss that you had there, uh, which I'm sure was difficult for you. Regardless of that, and now that you have this job, do you feel that maybe there's a chance in the future that, once again, you'll run? I I've certainly... I'm not just serving for the sake of serving. I wouldn't just hold any seat to stay in office and, and, and take a paycheck. I want to be effective. And I do believe there is the opportunity to be very effective at the federal level. Um, if the opportunity came about, I would be open to serving uh, once again. I've really enjoyed this is This has been the most exciting eight years of my life. Um, I've learned so much. Uh, and, and it's now allowing me to do something else in the private sector. But I'll probably get a little more time with my family on this side now, too. I'm sure you will. An amazing eight years, and we thank you so much for all that you have done for this community. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure.